to build authority. Let me start that over. We're, we're diving into market data right now, how to build our authority, create market growth, utilizing data. We're going to talk about um, why are we going to do this? Why do we even care about this? What are the platforms to use? And then how to use those platforms to create growth in our real estate business. And, you know, market data is the lifeblood of our business. I mean, it's how we answer the question, how's the market? So this is one of the most valuable sessions you could attend today. Uh, and let me just share a quick story. I used to work with a real estate agent uh, almost 20 years ago when I got licensed. I worked in the Prescott, Arizona market. And I remember this real estate agent. I was a young, hungry go-getter. And this real estate agent was probably five years older than me. And he would sit at his desk and he would just look through listings. He'd look at all the hot sheets every morning. He would just be studying and analyzing market data. And I, his name's Brad. Um, and by the way, he's still selling real estate in Prescott to this day. And, uh, and, but I said, Brad, you know, what are you doing on your computer all day? You should get out there, knock on doors, do open houses. He says, Aaron, I'm taking a little bit of a different approach to real estate. I want to know the market better than anybody else. And I just thought that's interesting. I mean, that's one way to niche and that's one way to really specialize. And you know what? He ended up being the guy that knew every single home in every community that he specialized in. He knew who used to own it, how much it sold for, what the inside looked like. He would preview all these homes. Anytime a home that would come on the market in his area, uh, you know, would be, you know, listed, he would, he would immediately preview it. He specialized in that. And now to this day, his name is Brad Bergman. He's one of the top five real estate agents in the Prescott market. And he's built a huge team. Um, and it's because he mastered the market, you guys. He answered the question, how's the market? With a high level of confidence, conviction, and knowledge. And it wasn't, well, man, the market's just crazy. It was, well, where are you, you know, where are you at? Where do you live? Where are you looking to move to? Right. And he knew how to answer those questions um, effectively. So let's go ahead and and dive in. So again, we're covering how to how to leverage market data for business growth. And again, like I mentioned, I'm one of you. I mean, I've, I've been licensed for almost 20 years. I have my broker's license in Arizona. Uh, I have, you know, I've, I've worked with countless buyers, sellers, and, uh, and it, I know how difficult it is. I know how many hats you have to wear, right? I know the challenges that come along with that. I know why there's a 90 plus percent failure rate in this business. And, you know, for me, the marketing technology side really uh, was where I found you know, my, my passion. And, and so that's where I've been over the last probably 15 or so years. Um, I work with a company called My Home and My Home's a marketing technology consulting company. We just work with the real estate community. So I work all over the country with, with, with real estate agents uh, and just helping them level up in their business. And I'm an NAR contributing author and, and NAR, uh, Inman contributing author, NAR certified technology instructor, and I help agents in all these different areas. So just want to throw a little shout out. If you're part of a brokerage, a team association, you could utilize some training like this. Uh, let me know, uh, reach out to me, go to AaronLacy.com. Be happy to chat with you. Okay. And then this is my team. So I've got a full team of, of, of marketing technology, you know, business strategists for real estate. All we do is specialize in real estate. And so this is uh, this is the squad right here. Um, and so, you know, my background, my love of this business really originated with my mom being a licensed agent when I was a young child. And unfortunately, she failed out of the business because she didn't know the market very well. Uh, and there were some other some other reasons for that. Right. Uh, but again, I've devoted my life to that ever since. And uh, my mom went on to become a school teacher. My dad in the real estate business. Um, in the, in the Prescott area. So today's objectives, right? We're going to cover why is market data critical to our business success? Number two, we're going to cover what are the best market data tools we have access to? Number three, how can we leverage market data to grow our businesses? So let's, let's dive in, you guys. Why do we care about market data? Well, for the reasons I mentioned, but specifically to build authority through consistent sharing of clear market behavior, okay? And this is really what I want to, one of the main points that I want you to take away from today's session is sharing market data 
but your perspective on that data consistently is a way for you to build authority. And we should be thinking in terms of authority with everything that we do, because people want to work with authorities. They want to work with thought leaders. They want to work with subject matter experts. And we can position ourselves as authorities if we consistently share market behavior in a clear way. And the behavior, when I say sharing of clear market behavior, behavior is what is happening in the market and what you should do as a result. Okay, so that's it. It's not just sharing market data. It's not just us knowing market data. It's us analyzing that and going, you know what? Here's how I interpret that data for a buyer, for a seller. So that you can specifically answer the how's the market question and take that a step further and utilize these incredible platforms for building authority like Facebook, Google Business, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, okay? TikTok, what have you, right? These, these places where people are spending hours a day scrolling aimlessly through news feeds, looking at fail videos and you just, you know, just being entertained. But if we can insert ourselves into that, we can disrupt their, their just entertainment endless scroll and deliver some valuable information for them. And they will reward us for it. We'll occupy top of mind with them. We will uh, they'll see us as an authority, especially if we do it consistency, consistently. And you guys, this is about leadership. And, you know, I work with, again, a lot of agents, right? A, a lot of agents in multiple different capacities and different levels of their career with different production levels. And some are doing, selling, you know, one, you know, handful of homes a year, they're newer agents and others are selling hundreds of homes a year. And, the ones that really excel in this business see themselves as leaders. And as a leader, you have the obligation and duty to deliver consistent information to your people, specifically with what's happening in the real estate industry, with what's, with what's happening in the real estate market. I mean, it is absolutely your duty to do that. People expect that from you in the same way that they expect their, their, their pediatrician to let them know about what's happening with their kid's health or their, their family doctor to let them know that there's a new illness or virus going around and to take precautions for that or their financial advisor to let them know, hey, hold off on purchases right now. There's some new uh, information you need to know about or their CPA or accountant to let them know that the tax code has been updated and they can now write off specific things, right? You as a real estate agent, this is you consistently delivering this valuable information to your people. And what's what holds us back from doing this, right? Maybe we don't see ourselves as these, as these, these professional um, advisors, consultants, because maybe the barrier to entry to this business is a little low, right? Maybe it was easy to get our real estate license, or maybe it's because we're paying too much attention to other real estate agents that are just you know, posting dance videos. And, you know, I've got, you know, this, this guy on Instagram, I don't know if you've seen him, Steven Diaz, he's in the NorCal market. He's doing these uh, real estate rap videos, right? Hey, that's his niche. Good for him. But I wonder how much business that's actually driving, right? Do people actually see him as being an authority, somebody they're going to turn to with their most valuable asset, or are they just being entertained by him? You know, so this is all about leadership, you guys. Let's go ahead and jump in to the what, what, where can we go for good market data? And then we're going to finish with how to leverage that data again, from a leadership standpoint. So we're going to start with the platform that we all have access to. And of course that's flex MLS. And how do we get access to the, to the market data and flex MLS? Well, we go to market summary. And I just want to share with you, if you're not familiar with how to get access to this, uh, to the market su uh, summary section, what you'll do is you'll click on menu, whether you have the horizontal navigation or the, or the vertical navigation, and you're going to scroll down and under statistics, you're going to see market summary. Okay, market summary. So click on market summary. I've even bookmarked that so that's right at the top. And then what you'll do when you go to market summary is you'll click on customize new location. And what we're going to do today is we're going to use Mesa as our example. So for some of you that are in Mesa today or that are watching this uh, on, on YouTube or from the WeServe website, 
Uh, you're in for a delight. We're going to cover Mesa in, in all of our, our, our data and examples today. So market summary for May 2023, Mesa residential, right? We've got the, the critical numbers for the market. Here's how many number of listings, list price, absorption rate, sold to list ratio, days on market. We can see how it's trended over the last year, price volume. We can look at a lot of other additional data. Now, we all can look and see, and we know what, what this means for the most part, all right? Maybe absorption rate might be a tougher one. Absorption rate is essentially, if no new listings were to be listed, how many months would it take to sell the current inventory? And as of right now, 1.68 months, okay? But here's the thing. Now, this is fairly easy for us to analyze and interpret. And by the way, I'm not gonna leave you hanging on this data. I've got some other sources and we're gonna take a deep dive into actually looking at data from one of my favorite sources. Uh, but do you think the average homeowner or home buyer knows what absorption rate means? In fact, I would say even the educated home buyer or home seller has no idea. Do you know the difference between average list price and median list price? Or average days on market and median days on market? I'm going to cover that here in a second. And I'm going to give you a very compelling reason for you to start thinking in terms of median versus average. Median are much more accurate numbers. And they're going to tell a more compelling story, by the way. Okay? Much more compelling story. They're less, the median numbers are less subjective to the outliers. If there were 100 homes on the market, the median for the average sale price would be that 50, 50th or 51st home price. It just takes whatever is right in the middle of the full uh, of the full data set, if that makes sense. Whereas average adds them all up and divides them by the total number. This is much more subjective to being Super high or little too low because of the outliers. Average list price. Do you think this is going to be affected due to a $3 million home being listed in Mesa? Absolutely. It's going to pull that entire number up. What about median list price? Won't be affected really at all. This list price may go up $500. Okay. Uh, okay. So we're going to touch on that. But notice right here, average versus median Days on market. You want to tell a comparing, compelling story to your buyers? Stop using averages. Average days on market, 63. Median, 40. That's over 50% less. Okay? That's a big difference. That's a huge difference. Okay? Um, okay. So, so Flex MLS has the market summary section, right? And then there's some other, there's some other tools here um, that you might you may have access to. Uh, Atlas, give you some market data. RPR, we're going to jump into next. RPR stands for Realtors Property Resource. It's a free NAR benefit for being a Realtor member. You guys, RPR, you can get to RPR by, again, going to menu under products, click on RPR, or you can go to NARRPR.com. And you'll need to register. It's free for you. So you'll go through the registration process, just prove to them that you're a realtor and you'll get access to it. Once, you've, once you get access, this is what the dashboard looks like. You guys, this is a $100 million property information, property data, and property reporting platform with an incredible app that's constantly updated that I feel like nobody's using. And why the heck are we not using it? Anyway, I'm a little biased too. I'm an NAR certified uh, RPR instructor. So one thing I want to share with you, though, in RPR, right, we can analyze the Mesa market. We can take a deep dive. We can even click on, so if I click on Mesa, for example, and we go, I'm going to go map search, and then I click on create report. You guys, look at the reports we can generate for this market, right, for Mesa, Arizona. We can generate a 26-page market activity report. Now, I'm going to get into the, you know, what type of data we can we can really start to, to, to generate and then how we can share it. But this report for Mesa or any other market that you were would be a phenomenal handout at an open house. 
And whether you use it as an open, a handout or you put in a nice three ring binder and you just had it available as a sample and you said, hey, here's a sample of what's happening in the Mesa market. And by the way, if you want to get this email to you, drop me your email. Okay, drop me your email. So again, want to make you aware of what's available. We're not going to take a deep dive into this right now, but this should pique your interest in wanting to jump into RPR. Uh, let's keep moving forward. Uh, I'm going to share with you one more resource before I get to my, my favorite one. But, and, and in fact, I'm going to go to Redfin. Now, regardless of how you feel about Redfin, they've got some of the best market data in the business. If you go to redfin.com, you click on buy and you go down to US housing market. Here's why I love this platform uh, and, and the data they provide. They spend millions of dollars, right? Analyzing what's happening in the market down to a sub-market level and they make it all available for free. But in addition to that, there's a tab here called migration. And you can now see where people are moving from and moving to from whatever area you specialize in. So let's just plug in Mesa, Arizona, for example. Now it's going to show us the Mesa housing market trends. So what is the housing market like in Mesa today? Median sale price. Number of homes sold. Median days on market. Right, We can see trending data over the last year, three years, five years. Uh, but here's, we can see, I like this one, sale to list ratio, homes sold above list price, homes with price drops. Here's what I really like too. This migration and relocation trend data. People moving to Mesa and moving from Mesa. Where are they moving to Mesa from? These are the top feeder markets. Where are people leaving Mesa and moving to? They're heading east. Pretty interesting. And they actually break it down. So you'll see people are moving to Mesa from the top feeder city for Mesa, Seattle. Second, LA. Those are neck and neck. And a fairly distant third and fourth, Tucson, San Francisco, Chicago. And then you've got Portland, Houston, San Diego, Denver, and Minneapolis. Okay. If I was doing any buyer lead generation, I'd be targeting people in Seattle and LA, okay? I go, considering a move to the Phoenix metro area, I'm your source. Here's some sample price points of homes that are available in these markets. Um, take a look. I'd love to set you up on a specific search that really matches the criteria you're looking for, okay? That'd be a great Facebook, Instagram ad. Um, and then people are leaving Mesa for... This is interesting. They're staying in Arizona for the most part, and then they're they're heading out of that. Tennessee, Florida, Texas. Okay. So some interesting data there. I like that. Let me jump into my favorite data source, and that's this, this platform that's powered by Altos Research. Altos Research is an industry-leading market data platform. And this specific report, you can get access through your local title company, uh, specifically this one, uh, you, you've got, I got access through WFG national title. So WFG national title can get you access to this. Here's why I love this report. Every single Monday morning, this system emails me a single email with all the links to all the different sub markets in the Valley that I want to specialize in, that I want to work in. Okay. Uh, that I want a, a market report for. And when I click on one of those links, I now get access to this dynamic report. And here's what I love. I love this real-time market profile on the right-hand side where it's showing me the median list price, the median price of new listings per square foot, average versus median days on market. And if you look here, average days on market, 70, median 35, literally half, right? So that's why we wanna move away from averages. This is much more compelling. I mean, it's just more realistic too, right? And so this platform uses, has a direct access to the MLS. It uses yesterday's active inventory to calculate all these numbers. Um, so 
what is the story though that this real-time market profile is telling me? And then how can I analyze and interpret that story and share it with others so that I can create clarity with them? Because when we share data like this with others, where we just copy and paste, we're sharing these graphics or we're sharing, hey, you know, the market month over month or year over year has gone up or down or they go, great, but what does that mean? You guys, we take for granted what we know, our ability to analyze this. They want to know, and it's in your best interest to say, well, here's what that means. And here's my advice for you. You guys, there was a, a guy that runs um, a, a, a company called Digital Marketer, does l- large conferences and conventions every year. There's a website called digitalmarketer.com. Ryan Deese, or Dice is his name. And he was a guest speaker at this big conference I went to years ago in Boston called uh, Inbound. And there was 35,000 attendees. It was a marketing conference. And Ryan's session was all about uh, these influencers, these mega influencers. And what made them mega influencers? I mean, I'm talking people like Gary Vaynerchuk and Tony Robbins and you know some of these huge, huge influencers, right? And he analyzed them and he found out that they had some some really quite a few commonalities and he broke it down into five main commonalities. But one of the major commonalities that these big authorities were people that, I mean, where millions of people follow them and really, you know, really, really like just, you know, it just took every word that they said as being this sort of gospel, right. For whatever their respective industry was, what they, what these authorities did was, is they took an opinion on whatever that subject matter was in their industry. And they consistently delivered an opinion, regardless if it ended up being right or wrong. But they had the courage to say, I would wait to buy, or I would not buy right now, or here is what you should do as a buyer, or here's what you should do as a seller. They took a definitive perspective and angle, and they delivered that consistently to their people. And that's the definition of leadership is being decisive, is making decisions for other people. That's what leadership is, right? You you making decisions for others. And you can only do that if you feel comfortable and convicted and confident in your decision making. But at a certain point, you have to make the decision and you have to stand behind it. And it, regardless of whether it's right or wrong, So for me, if I looked at this Mesa market and I had a home buyer say, Aaron, should I buy a home right now or should I wait? You know what I would say to them? I would say, I would buy right now. And here's the reason why, okay? Here's the reason why. We're seeing prices go up. If you wait to buy, you're gonna afford less of a home three, six, nine, 12 months from now. Buy right now. Oh, you don't want to buy because you're waiting on interest rates to go down? What if they never go down? Or what if they do go down later? Guess what? You can buy more home now. You can always refi later. Okay? Um, oh, it, oh, wait, you need to sell first. Is now a good time to sell? Well, obviously, now is also a great time to sell. You guys, it's rarely ever where it's not a good time to buy or sell. I mean, I'm going to be honest. But for you... To say and take a perspective for a buyer and seller and back it up with data, it really adds credibility and it helps you build your authority. And you guys, again, I'm going to share with you one of the best ways to to do that Um, again here in a moment. Uh, Here's what I would say, right? This, This report, one of my favorite reports, because all of these data points, these little graphs right here, these are all totally interactive and they're go- they each go back three months. So I can see a three-month trend line of what's happening. If I want to go back five years for, e- for each of these data points, I just scroll down. Here's a chart right here where I can select from any of those data points. I can look at inventory for Mesa. I can go back five years. I can see the peaks and valleys of the market. I can see when inventory is at its highest, when it's at its lowest. I can help advise my, my home buyer. I can say, home buyer, Right now is the best time to look. We're at an inventory low. It typically peaks around November, which is five months from now, which is kind of where you want to buy. We need to start looking now so that we can take advantage of that opportunity then, okay? 
Um, but this is a this tells such a great story. You can also look at I like this median list price. All right, took a downswing there, but you'll notice it's on the upswing for Mesa. But overall, over the last five years, that's a pretty consistent line. And actually, if you connected this point, by the way, each of these little these diamonds represent one point one year in history. If you if you connected all these with a line, you'd see there's a just a consistent appreciation prior to even COVID, right? I know there was some COVID jump there, but you'll notice fairly inconsequential. This is a fairly steady and consistent line. This also counters the, are we in a bubble? Is there going to be our prices? Is there going to be some more market depreciation, market crash? This is, we're seeing consistent appreciation year over year. Okay. Um, so here's, here's what I want to jump into. Okay, I want to now jump into how can we leverage this data? And for those that are familiar with chat GPT, that's what we're going to jump into today. We're going to jump into chat GPT, you guys. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to start a new chat in chat GPT. If you're not familiar with chat GPT, uh, here's what I'd recommend. You know, check out my, I, I dropped a YouTube training on chat GPT, uh, just search for Aaron Lacey chat GPT and Google or YouTube, or go to chat.openai.com, register for a free account, get in here and start playing around with this. But I can tell you, there's just so many resources online for you. Search in Google chat GPT real estate agent, right? Um, or attend one of my sessions. You guys, here's what I want to do. I'm going to take this report right here. And I'm going to have chat GPT analyze this. Okay, I'm going to have chat GPT analyze this. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually just click right here and I'm going to actually select, click and drag and copy and paste all of this. Okay, I'm just going to, I'm just literally, I just highlighted this all the way here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go copy. I'm going to come over to chat GPT. I'm going to type in, I'm going to type in this. I'm going to say, using the following real estate market stats. I'm gonna say, write an email to my database. And then I'm gonna do a colon and I'm gonna add quotes. And in the quotes, I'm gonna paste all that stuff that I just copied over. I mean, look at this. Look, it's like, how do you even decipher what that is? Okay. So using the following real estate market stats, write an email to my database and I'm going to click on send message. And look how quickly ChatGPT analyzes that data and then scripts an email for me with a subject line. Stay informed with the real estate market data, uh, real estate with the Mesa real estate market. Dear whoever, I want to share the latest real estate market stats for Mesa. Here are the key stats, market list price, market action index, and inventory, right? And then it goes through and breaks down the data even further. And then even provides a call to action. If you want to stay informed, click here to receive real-time updates, okay? Um, you guys, this is an email that we could send out. Now, what else could we do? We could say... Write a Facebook post with this data. Okay, now here's a Facebook post with emojis. Okay, what else can we say? We could say, script out a 60 second Instagram reel. Now here's a 60 second Instagram reel. Okay. With literally it's giving us opening shot, a beautiful area of Mesa voiceover. Hey, Mesa residents and real estate enthusiasts looking to stay in the know about your local market trends. We've got you covered. Cut to a graphic displaying the text Mesa real estate market update. Here's the latest scoop on the real estate market as of, you know, Monday, June 12th. Cut to a graphic displaying the text median list price. The median list price for homes in Mesa is 579.95, showing an upward trend. 
strong sellers market, right? Here's a scripted video for you. You guys, I'm going to get into a few sales strategies here too, uh, just for fun. But what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to turn this information into a way that where you can consistently deliver market data to create that clarity, right? To create that clarity. We should be doing this every single week, whether you're emailing your database. Now, if you have your database segmented into areas, you can easily generate one for Mesa, one for, one for Chandler, one for Gilbert, one for Queen Creek, one for you name the area, right? Really easy to do. Um, check this out. So here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say, you know what? And this is, a, I'm just going to copy and paste this over. Uh, this, this video actually will be on the WeServe YouTube channel as well as the WeServe website. Yeah, WeServe website. And in fact, let me just, let me just take a moment real quick to go uh, and show you where this is going to live. Um, so if you go down to, uh, all right, you guys, we're going to, we're going to find this together. Um, I believe here it is webinar playback. So if you go, we serve realtor education, webinar playback class playbacks, um, uh, let's see business development, commercial real estate. Here we go. So digital marketing, social media, online presence, and branding. In fact, every single one of these is mine. So build authority with TikTok and Reels, brand yourself like a Fortune 500 company, turn your con uh, contacts into commission, sales tips, effective Google business profile, farming 2.0, lead generating online presence, win more listings with the new RPR, advertising on Facebook and Instagram. In fact, there's some really good content there, you guys. Um, so definitely check that out, okay? Let's jump back over to, uh, let's jump back over to chat GPT. So, I'm going to say using this market information, how can how would I influence a home buyer to buy a home now rather than wait? Right? Because this isn't the easiest of conversations. And of course, we want some context. We want to know what their timing and their intention is, you know, why they're looking to buy, when they need to buy buy. Uh, but overall, look at this. Are you tired of waiting for the perfect time to buy your dream home in Mesa? Well, wait no more. Here's how the current market information can influence you to make a move and purchase your home now. Increasing prices, right? So they've been on the rise and in indicating a trend of appreciation. So by buying now, you lock in a more affordable price before it increases even further. Number two, strong seller's market. So by acting now, you have a competitive advantage in a market where sellers have the upper hand. Um, okay, so here's what I would say. Why is this strong seller's market a benefit to a buyer? You guys just, here's, here's a case, case in point that chat GPT can be misleading at times. Never take it as completely being truthful all the time. Chat GPT is overconfident. Why is a strong seller's market a benefit to a home buyer? Um, I guess it's saying if you act now, you have a competitive advantage in a market where sellers are continually having the upper hand, right? So if it becomes even more of a seller's market, then you know you're going to have more opportunity now versus later. So that really kind of plays into the pricing as well. Let's look at the third thing: limited inventory. If inventory continues to decline, obviously now would be a better time to purchase. Um, low interest rates. Relatively, these interest rates are actually low, right? Relatively speaking. Relative to what happened during COVID and over the last three years, they're insanely high, right? They're what triple what they used to be. It's hard, I know, educating our buyers and moving them through that. But if you look, do you guys check this out? 30-year uh, mortgage interest rate graph. Have you guys seen this? Uh, so over the last 30 years, since 1971, the average interest rate has been 
7.75. You guys see that? Let me go down here. So over the last, actually 50 years, over the last 50 years, the average interest rate averages out to 7.75. We're under that, right? I think we're under that. Uh, yeah, we saw a, we saw a government induced interest rate drop. It was at, completely unrealistic, not based on market fundamentals. It was due to, you know, the Fed pumping tons of money into the market to, to keep the market just moving. Unrealistic, you guys. The average interest rate over the last 50 years has been 7.75. We're under that right now. So we have a historically low interest rate. I know that's a hard one for buyers to swallow right now, but it's a fact. Uh, and then the last one, investment potential. Uh, investment potential. So here's one other thing I want to I share with you on chat GPT. So you could also say, well, turn this, uh, you know, using this market information, how would you influence a home seller to sell a home now rather than wait? And, but here's what I'm going to take this to the next level. I'm going to, I'm going to prompt chat GPT to say, Hey, script this into an email that includes objection handling, objection handling. So again, here's that email or here's that conversation you may have with a buyer where they say, well, you know what? You know what? I just, you know, here, here's some of my challenges with the market. Well, now you've included objection handling. You could say, by buying now, you have the opportunity to secure a more affordable price before it increases further. Or, you know, by acting now, you have a competitive advantage in and can negotiate with motivated sellers who are ready to sell their homes. Or by purchasing now, you increase your chance to find the perfect property and avoid the risk of losing out to other buyers. Or, right? So now we can tap into the objection handling that ChatGPT has to offer here, you guys. Uh, okay, so let's let's go ahead and we covered email. Now, would you just send out an email that looks like this? Not a bad looking email. Here, let me share with you a couple different options, a couple different things. Now, I'm not saying that these are right or wrong. I just want to share with you. These are what some other agents are doing where they're sending out these monthly update emails where they share their perspective and then they get into the data. Or here's another example. Here's an agent. These are examples of emails sending sent through MailChimp or Constant Contact or you know sometimes your CRM or you know, whatever might, might offer these. Uh, but here's what's happening in the market. Uh, otherwise known as here's what is here. You here's my perspective. And then he's sharing the market stats, right? Do these market stats look familiar? They should, they came right from here. In fact, all he did was he just screenshotted this little index, which basically indicates whether it's a seller's market or a buyer's market. If we go back to that email, there's the market action index okay, for Paradise Valley, Phoenix, and Gilbert. That's where he works. Okay, so, so different ways to leverage that through email. So a couple different options there. Uh, what's another way you can share market information? Well, if we jump on to, let me jump on to Instagram. Here's an agent sharing some market information. metro area okay uh and by the way this is actually from uh 2019 really interesting yeah. really wow. interesting what a different market it was in 2019 but here's an example of an agent that's taken this and created some video content with it what i thought was interesting is when i went to instagram just to search for mesa real estate market i found a hashtag called mesa market update and there were there was no content in that, right? That could be a hashtag that you take over with your Mesa market updates. I'm just saying. Uh, or you could go to TikTok. And here's what I like about TikTok is TikTok has a little better a, a little better search feature. I'm gonna say Mesa real estate market update. Okay. And here's some of those real estate market updates 
that agents are sharing. But what's interesting is they don't look incredibly compelling, even though they're still getting thousands of views. And I'm going to take about two minutes and I'm going to show you the best way to share a market update on one of these social platforms, you guys. Um, and by the way, I even did that same thing here on Facebook, Mesa Real Estate Market. And I didn't see anything that was too exciting. Nothing that was super educational. Nothing that was creating positioning an agent as being an authority as a leader. Okay. Uh, you know, even YouTube, right? Mesa Real Estate Market update. You guys, check this out. Look at Matt Greer over here. Seven days ago, he did a June market update for Mesa, Arizona. Look how many views he has on that thing. 7,400 views on his YouTube video. Seven days ago. Not bad. Uh, by the way, I'm a, I'm a big fan of YouTube. The reason is, while some of these are from seven days ago, some of these are from three months ago or longer. And content on Facebook and Instagram, it has a shelf life of three days. As soon as it leaves the newsfeed, it's gone. Why? Because nobody's going to Instagram searching for Mesa Market Update. They're not going to TikTok searching for anything. They're only searching for people. Where are people going to search for this information? They're going to Google. They're going to YouTube. Uh, you guys, check this out. Here's what I'm going to do. For you right now because i think this is such a valuable thing if i was a real estate agent if i was in your shoes this is what i would be doing i'd be doing this every single week i'm going to actually share my phone right now and i'm going to jump on instagram okay i'm going to jump on instagram right now okay all right so, but the first things first, I'm going to pull up that market report that we already went through. And that looks like this, okay? Because I receive that every Monday morning via email. I'm going to click on that. It's going to pop open in my browser. And I'm going to scroll down to this part right here, real-time market profile. And then I am going to screenshot that, okay? On your iPhone, Android, easy to do, screenshot that. I'm going to jump out of this. And I'm going to go over to Instagram. Okay, I'm going to pop open Instagram. Here we are in Instagram. And I am going to click on Reel. Okay, everybody with me? So now what I'm going to do is you'll notice there's a green screen feature. If you have the most recent version of Instagram, you should have that green screen feature there. Okay. I'm going to click on green screen and I'm going to click on choose background or change background. See that change background right there? I'm going to click on change background. Okay. And I'm going to click on my camera roll. Okay. And I'm going to select that Mesa real time market profile. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply take 30 seconds. I'm going to say, I'm going to click the record button right here. The Mesa real estate market is on fire. And I know that's not what you're hearing on a national level, but check out what's happening in the market. The median list price is at almost 580,000. That's up over 20% just over the last three months. You guys, we're seeing the median days on market now at 35, which is down 28% over the last three months. We're seeing less price decreases. We're even seeing some price increases. We're seeing inventory dropping. If you've been on the fence to buy, get off the fence. If you've been on the fence to sell, you guys, again, this is a great time to sell. Uh, I hope this helps in your real estate decisions. Talk to you soon. Who can do that once a week? I know you all can. Right, I know you all can. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on next. The one thing you want to add to this, and this isn't a reels class, but I'm giving you guys a little of everything in today's session because why not? Um, 
let me just actually disconnect and reconnect one sec guys gets a little laggy on occasion so let's reconnect one of the most important things you can add to any video that you're creating and that's up captions. over 20 percent just over the last three months okay our captions what we're going to do at the top that second bubble from the right hand side this little smiley face we're going to click on that those are stickers we're going to click on the top middle option captions and now Instagram is going to create captions for our reel. There are our captions. I'm going to click on done and done. Oh, I'm going to click on done. You guys, we're seeing the media okay. days on market we're now at our 35. I'm going to need to move those down a little bit. Which and you know what? Is I'm going to go ahead and add a background to those. Over the last three months. We're seeing less price decreases. We're even seeing some price increases. Okay. We're seeing inventory dropping. If you've been Are on you guys, the fence um, to buy. Did I make that look easy? Is it harder than what I just showed, showed you? Like, what's the hardest part? Us looking at ourselves. That's the hardest part every single time. Guess what? My eyes are, you know, I need some eye drops. I'm balding. My hair's a little out of whack. I don't care. <laughs> you know what I mean? Do you think people, do you think people are worried about that? No, they're like, damn, Jacob's delivering the heat week in and week out. He is, man, he's, you know what? We're not, we're not in the market right now, but when we are, we're turning to Jacob because he just is, he's dialed in. You know what I mean? He's dialed in. All right, you guys, here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to open it up to some questions as we finish up for today. Uh, but what I would say for you too is, you guys, you know, this is about leadership. This is about you answering that question, how's the market? Okay, that's what this is. This is about answering that question, how's the market? Because if we can answer that with conviction, with certainty, then we're going to impress that person to ask that question. And we are going to answer that on a, more, on, a, on a higher level with a larger audience utilizing our email, our database, our CRM, social media. We want to get that information out there because other people have the question, how's the market? What should I do right now? That's what you're going to answer. Um, you guys, thank you very much for jumping on. Thank you, we serve for putting this together. Thank you to our amazing sponsors, um, Paige, Stacy, and uh, Karen. You were also a sponsor, uh, right? No, okay, I forget who the third sponsor was, but thank you to this the great sponsors. Make sure you reach out to them uh, for making this happen. You guys, and follow me on Instagram, Aaron Zonin, and I will see you for our next. Uh, Renee was our was our other sponsor. Uh, I will see you in our next session, everybody. Take care, and we'll see everybody soon. Uh, and Thank by you. Way, any, any questions before we jump off? Thank you. Uh, not necessarily any questions. It's just like, you know, marketing is just such a, it's such a deep, it's, it's it, it, like, it shouldn't be challenging because it's very simple. You know what I'm saying? But like you said, it's the, it's the getting in front of and, and really putting yourself out there. You know what I'm saying? And, and really standing on your word. You know, yeah, but I do appreciate that for real. You guys, yeah. in order to really position yourself as an authority, move in that place of leadership, we have to be decisive and we have to be willing to be wrong. In order to be right, you have to accept that you're going to be wrong sometimes. I mean, think about how, how many authorities, how many intelligent people, how many economists didn't predict the market crash in 20, 2008, right? Right? Who's predicting what's happening in this real estate market now? Who, who actually knows for certain what's going to happen? Nobody. If the smartest minds don't know, then why are you supposed to know? You're not. So utilize this data. Tap into that courageous self that you know you have and put yourself out there. And when I say courageous, I mean courageous to be convicted, to just share your perspective and just to do it over video. Let's not hide behind the text. And again, I hey, something's better than nothing. If it's just a Facebook post or just an email, fine. But you really start to elevate when you tap into video, you guys. 
So, so all right. Uh, yeah. Quick question. Okay. Sure. So like, I mean, starting from ground zero, right. I'm not like, I'm new to the like Valley and everything. And, and what would you say would be the best, like where to start in social media marketing to really like, to put yourself out there. And what we do is a little bit different. We niche in, in helping solar homeowners, right? So we have like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I, I have information and, and a lot of value to share with people that don't know a lot about it. And uh, I just don't know really where to where to put myself. You guys, there's two types of social media contents. You're either educating or you're entertaining. Can you educate and or entertain or do both with, with you know, solar specific content? That I think for you, it's probably, there's probably a lot of educational, uh, there's an educational process you need to take people through. They don't realize probably a lot that is associated with, with solar, you know, the value of their home, how can they sell the property? Does it increase their, uh, their home, overall home's value? Are they, do, 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 does it decrease over time? I don't know. I'm just pulling stuff out of my head. Like, you know, there's a lot of great information. You got to get that out there. You got to share that. Right. Yeah. So I would share that. And so whether you're working in specific areas or sub markets of the valley or the entire valley, uh, but you want to get that information out and be as specific to areas as possible, because that makes people feel like the information is more valuable when you say like their city name or their community name. But if not, you say just just start consistently sharing information. Eventually, you're going to gain a following and people are going to start asking you questions. Okay. Right? And people okay. are already asking you questions. I mean, you've already having conversations about this, right? Yeah. Well, you're answering those questions over the phone, over text, over email, in person. Take the same question, answer it over social media. Hey, I just had somebody ask me, a homeowner asked me, a home buyer, uh, a homeowner that is looking at getting solar, a homeowner that has solar, but that's thinking about selling, asked me this. Okay. And Great okay. information to share. So, so starting on, I, I mean, say you have a page, zero followers, right? You just post the content, use hashtags, put it in maybe other pages. That's more where I'm, I'm curious and a little bit stuck. Yeah. How long have you been creating content consistently for? Just started. Yeah. just started. I just got my license. So, so g give it six months, post every single week for six months. Yeah. Here's the thing. How are we going to know? how to tweak our process if we don't even have a process. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I have people come to me and say, hey, Aaron, my reels are, they're dead. I'm not getting any views. I said, how many reels have you created? They said, well, I've, you know, I've created eight. I go, let's talk when you're at 50 and you've done that consistently. You know what I mean? Then we can start to go, okay, we can tweak this here. We can add a hook here. We can add a little more personality. We can, we can start to create angles. We can start to connect to other more influential people on social, their content. And we can spin that with our own angle. We can jump on trending sounds and trending. We can do, you know what I mean? We can start to like elevate in those ways, but we got to get the practice in. Yeah. You know what I mean? How are you going to hit a hundred mile an hour fastball if you haven't even gone to the batting cage? We got to start taking cracks at the batting cage and that's getting that content out. Here's the thing. You're never going to alienate your audience by just practicing. When I say practicing, you got, you got to get the content out. You got to, as my favorite author and one of the smartest guys in marketing psychology, Seth Godin says, he's written over 20 books on marketing. He says, you need to ship, you need to ship your product. You just start shipping it. Turn it, envision you're an artist a painter, and you need to start painting, dude. Start painting, start painting, start painting, right? The, some of the most prolific painters were the ones that painted literally thousands of pieces of work. And you're seeing, you're seeing the results. They're, they're popular, famous because of thousands of works later. We got to get to the thousands, you guys. All right, I'm going to end it there. Thank no, you, everybody. Dude, that, that, that makes perfect sense. That makes All right, perfect you guys. Sense. We'll yeah. see you. All right, thank you, sir. Take care.